from Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. I'm Michelle Green, and on behalf of Pastor Jason and the officer of the church, we'd like to welcome you to our worship service this morning. We pray that you will encounter God through our scripture and music and our worship service this morning. I'd like to encourage you to find the friendship register at the end of your pew to record your presence today and take note of those who are worshiping near you. I know that Susan Glenn has an announcement for us about dinner and devotion, so I'm going to let her make that. Good morning. So this is the week. Dinner and devotion is this week. We have a really big group going out on Tuesday night, and I have an announcement for the people who signed up for Tuesday. Check your schedule and let me know if you're still coming or if you want to move it to a later time because we've had a big change in our schedule on Tuesday. I have a group on Wednesday night that has lots of space open still. And then, of course, we're having dinner in the Martin's home, hot dogs and hamburgers and veggie burgers on Friday night. So um, you can email me. You can grab a form from me. Either way, let me know today uh, if for Tuesday or Wednesday and maybe by Tuesday if you're coming on Friday. We'd love to have you come. Just have dinner. Think a little bit about how Christ is in our lives and share a bunch of fellowship and fun. It's going to be really nice by the end of the week, too. So let me know. I'd like to encourage you to check your bulletin for other announcements and opportunities for uh, ways to interact with ministry programs that we have here at South Aiken Presbyterian. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. stand and join me in the call to worship. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who all justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, and Lord you shall serve. To the Lord you shall hold fast. God is your praise. The Lord is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen.
please be seated. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God first together, then silently. Gracious God, we confess that we are fearful of strangers in this world, not knowing how to respond in love. We tend to be untrusting, suspicious, and project on them bad experiences from our past instead of listening in love to their story. Help us to be open to listen to a stranger's story as we seek your will in each circumstance through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. As you hear the water being poured into the font, remember Jesus Christ washes away the sins of the world. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with each other. We'd like to invite any children to come up front for the children's moment at this time. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Good. Good? Good. So today I brought a picture with me. Okay. This is a picture of my family. Yeah. Well, you got all my 
my sisters, my mom and dad in the middle. I got my brothers-in-law and all my nieces and nephew. My husband's in there, my kids. And, and I'm in there somewhere. Yep, I'm in there too. Uh, you want to hold it? Yeah, why don't you go sit over there and you can hold it. <laughs> so when you look at this picture, you see all my family, right? I love my family. Even though my sisters do drive me a little crazy. Do you have family members that drive you crazy? <laughs> Though when you need them, they're there for you, right? Just like my family's there for me when I need them. My mom and dad, even though I'm a lot older than I was when I was your age, they still take care of me when I'm sick or when I need their help with something. And when they're sick, I now help to take care of them. And when they need me, I will be there for them as well. So does your mommy and daddy help you when you're sick? Yes. Yeah? How about your, your sisters? Your sister help you when you're yeah. with sick? Yeah. <laughs> so now I want you to take a look at everybody out there and behind us. Do you see all of them? Guess what? They're a part of our family too. Yeah. That's a big family, huh? And when they need us, when they need me, or if they need you, they know that they can count on us, right? And if we need them, we can count on them. Now, when you leave church today, I want you to think about this. When you go out of the church and around town and the next town over, and you go out of state, maybe even out of this country, all those people, guess what? Are they part of our family too? Yes, yes they are because they're God's family, and we're part of God's family. So when they need help, we need to be there to help them, right? And when we need help, we can expect that we will have them to help us too. Okay, so when we go to Sunday school today, we're going to talk about different ways that we can help people that are in need. But let's first say a prayer, okay? Dear Lord, we are blessed to be a part of your family. Help us find ways to help those who may need us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's go to God in prayer, asking the Spirit to enliven our minds and our understanding and our hearts. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you, Lord. We ask for you to give a message to us through your scripture and through the preaching, Lord. Move us to action and implementation in our life through the faith in Jesus Christ. Silence any voice but your very own and allow all our meditations be glorifying to you. In Christ I pray, amen. The Leviticus chapter 19, Israel's law includes how to treat a person who is traveling from one country to reside in another. 36 times Israel is affirmed to treat visitors, immigrants, and the Pew Bible translation even says aliens, with love, respect, and hospitality. This is a part of being holy as God is holy. Listen to the law given to Israel. And I will be reading from the scripture from the Common English Version, not the Pew Bible's version of New Revised Standard Version due to closer language in today's world. Listen for the word of the Lord. When immigrants live in your land with you, you must not cheat them. Any immigrant who lives with you must be treated as if they were one of your citizens. You must love them as yourself because you were immigrants in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And the gospel comes from Matthew 25, 31 through 45. This section of scripture gives the picture of Jesus sitting on the throne in all his glory with the angels and kind of a judgment scene of the nations. Judging between the sheep and the goats, those who are righteous and unrighteous. They are separated by whether they fed the hungry, gave drink to the thirsty, showing hospitality to the strangers, clothed the naked and cared for the sick, and visited those in prison. Listen for a word from the Lord from Matthew's Gospel. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Surely I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you who, you who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it when we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Twenty-one miles away from Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia, is a small town called Clarkston, Georgia. 31.8% of the population is foreign-born. 60 languages spoken in a 1.1 square mile. That is new language every 100 square feet. Clarkson, Georgia is the home of several refugee resettlement programs and ministries, and it is the 14 minutes away from the seminary I graduated from. It was in this context, among others, I received firsthand how to not take for granted the modern conveniences of our American culture and its generosity. Many ministries in this area take in refugees who are settling in the area and teach them about how light switches work, indoor plumbing functions as well as the community services in order to gain assistance to become settled in a new country, new living arrangements, and a new culture experience with housing. Ministries are set up to assist and be hospitable to all people, no matter whether they come from Vietnam or the Middle East. In 20. 22, 25,465 refugees were taken in by the U.S. For some of the refugees, just having a friend who will be trustworthy and honest is enough hospitality for them. A smile they would take on a given day. When I did one of my classes there, I was shocked to find a shop that said camel meat available. Shocking to me. Didn't know camel meat was a thing. So hospitality comes in many forms. Maybe a smile, maybe a drink of cold water on a summer day, and maybe some hot cocoa on a cold one. Like all hospitality, it reveals a difference between you and another that needs to be overcome by acknowledging that we all were strangers in a place or a city at one time or another. Remembering how that felt is good reflections as well as we, when someone reaches out to you to welcome you to the new, new neighborhood or have lunch or coffee. Stark, a social researcher, says that that most strangers we meet are not dangerous. Not dangerous, but our mind thinks by default they're dangerous. We are uneasy around them because we have no context and do not know their intentions. So instead of using our perceptions, our Senses and making choices, we rely on the category of stranger. Popular movies like Kindergarten Cop, you may remember that, Arnold Schwarzenegger, said, Stranger danger, stranger danger. Remember that? Maybe not. 
she claims that being welcoming and knowing when it's not appropriate to be welcoming is good to know, but those concepts do not mean we need to be fearful of the stranger. In our culture now, fearful feelings occur when strangers, possibly based on a bad experience when you were younger in your life, you take that experience and keep the fear and apply it to all circumstances and all people who you meet, even though they are nowhere the people or circumstances you faced in the past. There's no credibility to be fearful. And so the fear stays in us, preventing us to reach out with that uncomfortable, uneasy feeling. But knowing in our hearts that welcoming someone could become a new friend, could be a, a, a new pickleball player, maybe even a new worshiper with us. 60% of all first-time visitors of worships come at a personal invitation. Now, this is not a membership sermon, though, but I lean into the fact that through a hospitable invitation that relationships form, and God is glorified through our lives. Our scripture is clear that God, through Israel, and how Jesus welcomed all people of difference, race, gender, etc., we are asked to do the same. We're asked to get out of our comfort zone and encounter the stranger. We are asked and even called through a faithful life to have and embrace a revolutionary Christ-like hospitality. It is common in our culture to say hello and hi as a polite gesture of civility, but in our minds thinking, I hope they don't stop and talk to me. We do this when we catch the eye of the stranger, a gesture of kindness, and I see you instead of a glare and immediately look down or away, signaling not wanting to see or acknowledge or given into a fear response to the passerby. Offering a revolutionary Christ-like hospitality goes beyond the highs and hellos. Revolutionary doesn't mean that we will be revolting with violence, as history recounts, but pushes us against the status quo for welcoming someone to the town, to the church, and to an event in Aiken. Pushes us past the status quo of the hi and hello, but into relationship. Like us, I think God heard Israel's flinch or grimace on the people's faces when law required treating immigrants with respect, love, as we love ourselves. And with political turmoil, we get clouded in our vision and not see what God is saying to us. Like when we say hi and hello and our minds think, I don't really want to talk. What do I do? We heard in the gospel a warning, though. Part of being righteous is offering food to the hungry, water to the thirsty, hospitality to the stranger, clothing for those who are naked, care for those who are sick, and visitation for those who are incarcerated. The gospel identifies Jesus to each of us as individuals with needs. 
declares, if you did it to them, you did it to me. Taking Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and matching it up with the imprisoned, with the incarcerated, with the hungry, with the thirsty, with the one that was sick. And says very clearly, if you did it to them, you're doing it to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The opposite applies as well. If you did not do it, then you did not do it to Jesus as well. Stark shares why we should talk to strangers beyond Christ's call to followers. Her message was not a Christian message. It was a research message. In her talk, 2016, she acknowledged that it is giving... It's not giving a service to someone, to another person, when we are being hospitable. It is we automatically become a host, and they are a guest. In order to live into a revolutionary Christ-like hospitality for the church, we must be willing to present, maximize, to be fully present with the person that's in front of us. Putting away maybe some thoughts of the tasks that we need to do that day and focus on what they're saying to us and truly hear them. Not being distracted by our iPhone or wondering what we have to do, but looking at them and listening to them. We need to understand that dialogue, uh, a give and take, which literally means to stand without opinion, but to have a dialogue with the other person, the stranger, as we say, and respect the person, which literally, literally says, when you respect the person, I see you. And isn't that all what we want? from each other is to be seen feels good when we're seen it acknowledges our existence it makes a difference in our life when we're truly heard and That's something that they said was repeated back to them. It made you know that they heard you. We take this concept of seeing you as each person that may be a stranger to you is a child of God that has the image of God within them that deserves respect that deserves honoring and deserves a listening to and to see. Our welcoming, the highs and hellos are good and a start, but they are the status quo. How are you doing? Fine. It goes no further. Status quo. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean that you're fine? Are you all right today? How's, I, I ask this question. You may have experienced it when I talk to you. I'll say, how's your heart and mind today? How are you feeling today? There's answers for that. That shows me how you're doing. And I want to know. Our welcoming and hospitality commonly is Offered to the familiar, like-minded, homogeneous. Christ asks us to use our perception and not our fear to make a choice. Make a choice to encounter the stranger. Making a choice uses our perceptions versus categories 
which are shortcuts to our mind using to retain information instead of treating people as a child of God, an individual with respect. This past year, I was having a conversation with Kirk Callen about an area of ministry in the sanctuary and in the breezeway by the playground. I saw a couple walking, actually, from Whiskey Road to Silver Bluff Road. It was a young couple, interracial couple, coming down Mrs. Swing's Drive towards Silver Bluff Road, which many do in a day. After the conversation ended, I said uh, hello to the couple with a wave. And they said hello with a wave at back, being friendly. They were carrying grocery sacks from Kroger's. I met each other. They came over here to me, and I, as we joined, I found out that I had met the lady's mother and her daughter at the park a year or two earlier. I asked them if I if they had time to come in and have some coffee with me. They said they needed to put the groceries up and, and they would be over. Now, in my mind, when somebody tells me that, my mind, I confess, was skeptical. I didn't think they would come back possibly but I was open to it. Sure enough, not knowing whether they would come or show up or not, I patiently waited as I worked in the office. And sure enough, I heard the green double doors shut from my office. And I went out and greeted them again down the hallway of the Family Life Center. I welcomed them, and I got to know them, and got, they got to know me. They got to be told about the church and what we're about and the great community that we have and accepting community that we have and what we're trying to do going forward. I got to know them, and they got to know me. Strangers became friends that day. That day, they felt seen. That day, they felt heard. That day, they received Christ-like hospitality. This goes to show you that you never know how God will use you if you're open to being hospitable to all. Glory be to the Eternal Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and sing. Let us build a house. One, three, through five.
As we stay standing, let us affirm our faith in the brief statement of faith excerpt answering the question, Christian, who do you trust in? We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain, giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, and delivering us from death to life eternal. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life, the Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in one body of Christ, the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen. Seated. Join your spirit with mine as we pray a prayer of intercession for the church, for the world, for the nation our community, and our loved ones. Please pray with me. Interceding God, we come asking for you to urge us to meet strangers out of perception, senses, and choices, and not out of fear, or past context of bad experiences with a stranger. Help us go beyond the status quo and offer revolutionary Christ-like hospitality to each other and to those we will meet. We pray for your church as we align our missional activities toward your vision given to us. We pray for the world as the news outlets keep stats on death from bombings. Let us keep stats on praying for peace and being a peaceful person in our own context. We ask, O oh God, to stop the war in Israel and in Ukraine and all other conflicts. Allow them to come to the table and talk of peace and do peace in their land. Help all governments be conscious of pollution of the land and the earth. Help scientists curb, clean up, and come with new scientific proven ways to clean up our water supplies of plastics. We pray for the nation as gun violence results in three dead and two injured in Texas. Pray for those experiencing dangerous snowfalls, and those who are not able to have shelter from the cold temperatures. We pray for our community as power grids experiences outage and people go without heat. We pray for those affected by salmonella outbreak in the region. We pray for those coping with cancer and its treatments. We offer our loved ones who experience a season of grief such as the Hofstetters, the Lockards, Jeff and the Pethick, Lewis, Edwards, and Scott's family. We pray for comfort for Phyllis and John. Pray for Ethel and Lynn and Dot and Steve and Linda. Pray for Bob, Peg. Pray for Shirley as she recovers from her break of her hip. Pray for Jim. Comfort him as he journeys with her. Pray for Anita and Bob. Pray for Betty. God, we give you thanks for the pro progress and continue of Lois. God, be with Bill as he continues to recover. 
God, we pray for health concerns for Bill, Scott, Brooke, Myra, Samuel, Mike, Pat, Harry, Mary Louise, Leslie, Jane, and Barbara. We pray for healing and strength for Ed and Linda. Pray for Doug and Ray, Felder, Gail, and Doc. We pray for all those who are homebound this day, can't experience worship as we are today. Wrap your arms around them. And let us continue to seek ways to include them in our missional activity. Oh God, strengthen us through our life as all our afflictions and difficult medical circumstances arise. Help us depend more on you and see through your eyes each concern. Make us patient and faithful in our circumstances and allow us to deepen our belief in your hope and trust in you making all things well through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now let us offer ourselves to the throne of grace and mercy as we reflect on how to live into the revolutionary Christ-like hospitality and offer our time, talents, and our financial gifts to further the mission and vision here at SAPC. Ushers, please come.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ and showing us how to give hospitality. We give you thanks for the time, the talents, and all the financial resources that continue to be given in a generous way to continue the mission of Jesus Christ here at SAPC. Bless us as we go forward, as we live into this vision, and as we extend hospitality to all who we encounter. God, we give you thanks for the prayer that you taught your disciples long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now, take the love of Christ and encounter the stranger and offer hospitality to all you encounter. Now, may the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. we got five minutes to set up a little bit for the congregational meeting immediately following. 